everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kathy and you're watching Crafty Kathy. I am tickled pink to be back with you guys this week. I was on vacation last week and I feel like I was gone for a year. It was crazy. I missed you guys so much. And those of you that if this is your first time coming to my channel, I'd like to say welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And you guys that are returning, you know I love you from the bottom of my heart. If this is the first time that you've ever been to my channel, our motto is we have love, we have laughs, because it's always a hoot around here, and we have the DIYs. Our channel is very fast growing, and I hope that you'll subscribe and stick around and become a part of it. This week, I went back to the farmhouse, children, and I pulled out some farmhouse DIYs, and I hope you're going to like it. We're going to jump right into the video because I feel like I've been gone long enough, but not without our silly little theme song because I know if I didn't sing it and you guys didn't get to see Sabby, you'd probably find me and behead me. So, let me grab my executive producer. Here he is, the executive producer, Sabby. He really lounged around on vacation and got kind of lazy on me. So, are you ready to sing the silly little theme song? All right then, here we go. On our channel, did he just do that? Like, I didn't even sing yet. On our channel. What? On our channel. We got love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and the DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. That just shows you how smart they really are. I got this tobacco basket from the Goodwill for only $2.99, and I love this thing. It is huge. And all I'm going to do is just spruce it up a little bit with some of my antique wax by Waverly. I just put it on a baby wipe and rubbed it in. That's pretty much all I did, and I did not give it a complete, full, great coverage. I kind of just hit it kind of just real quick and, and because it didn't need a whole lot and I wanted some of the areas to look a little old and rough. In some places, I found that it was best to use my paintbrush because it was really just soaking up this antique wax. When I finished with that, I took one of those gather signs that comes from the Dollar Tree. I cut everything off of it, and then I'm going to put this shiplap looking paper on the back. I go over it really good with my glue stick all over that word gather, and then I'm just going to lay that scrapbook paper right down on top of it. I had to use two small pieces to get it to go correctly and make it look symmetrical. My next step was to get my white chalk paint and go around the edges of the sign. I did not give this a full coat either because I wanted some of the wood to show through. So I just kind of did like a little wishy-washy, hit or miss kind of paint job. Then I left it alone overnight so that that cardstock on the front could totally dry before my next step. I took my little X-Acto knife. It's a little finger knife and I absolutely love this thing. It made it easy for me to go all the way around the word gather, and I just peeled off that cardstock. I used my little diamond file. It's one of those files that comes from the Dollar Tree for your nails, and it's really good to use to get all of that excess cardstock off. It just trims it perfectly and makes it beautiful. 
I then took my Waverly Antique Wax and my small little distressing brush and I went all the way around the word gather. And in some places where it was a little bit more difficult to get my little brush, I just used a very small paint brush that has a small tip on the end of it. I took a bush from a flower arrangement that I had and I started cutting it up. I wanted to use a few of the branches from it so I could just use it for kind of like a background or a filler for my basket. When I figured out the placement of everything, I put a couple of dabs of glue down so it would just hold still. I definitely didn't want these branches to come flying out whenever I picked my basket up, but I don't like to use a whole lot of glue on my arrangements because that way if I want to use it later, I can. I wanted my word to really pop out there, so I put down a piece of my barn wood, glued it down to the bottom of the basket right in the center, and then I glued the word gather to the barn wood. I added a few of the orange mums that come from the Dollar Tree and then just some random leaves that had the yellow and the orange on it. And then I definitely liked the maroon color, so I added a couple of leaves with that maroon color in. I added some green fall berries in there and then these cute little pomegranates that come from the Dollar Tree. I even had like little cotton stems in there and cattails and I put a couple of those little small apples that I picked up off of Amazon, and those are in my Amazon store because everybody asked me about them. I also added a couple of those little small pumpkins that come from the Dollar Tree. I put in like a maroon color, and I put in the white. I just added kind of an array of everything. And then I made this bow, and I didn't even show on camera how I made the bow, but what I did is it has six loops. And all you do is you make a loop, and then you twist it with your finger, and then make another loop, and you just keep going back and forth, and then you tie the loops together at the end. When I finished, I realized I didn't like my basket at all. It just had too much of everything in it. So I pulled all the orange stuff and all the maroon stuff out, and I used this garland. It's one of those leaf garlands that come from Hobby Lobby. This did not come from the Dollar Tree. And I just started winding it inside the basket because I felt like it was just too overwhelming and not enough of the same things, if that makes sense. But I did keep my little pomegranates, my pumpkins, my cotton stems. I just took out those orange mums and the maroon mums, basically, is what I took out. And then the second time around, I really did like my basket. I decided to put my bow at the bottom of the basket. I wanted to complement the basket, not take away from it, so I just put that bow, glued it right down to the bottom part of the basket, and then to make the tail, all I did was took one longer piece of ribbon, and I tied a knot in the center of it, and that's what I glued underneath that ribbon. And then I cut some dovetails, and that's all I did, guys, and here's what it looks like. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that little red button and that bell. And there's a drop-down menu. And when you click all, YouTube will tell you every time I upload a video. DIY number two, we're going to make a cork pumpkin. 
When I painted these, I must not have even been rolling the film or something, but what I did was take the pumpkin color from Waverly and painted some of them that color, which is the orange, and then some of them are the apple barrel chocolate bar, and then some of them I just left the regular color of the cork. I have a total of 34, and what you do is you make two rows of five, two rows of six, and one row with seven, and one row has four. And all you do is piece it together. You start off on the bottom with your row of five, and then you're gonna put your row of six, then your row of seven, then your row of six, and then five, and then on the very top is gonna to be your row of four. And after I had finished this is when I realized I wanted to add that row of four just because I wanted it to be a little bit smaller and make it look rounder like a pumpkin. And all you do is just glue them together. And when you lay the corks on top of each other, they kind of go in the little crevice of the one above them so they fit very easily together. The one for the stem, I painted brown, and I cut the bottom part of it off because I wanted it to be a little bit smaller because a whole cork was just too big, and then I just glued it to the top. I have different embellishments that I'm just gonna glue on. I've got a green leaf, and then I'm gonna glue on an orange leaf, and I'm also going to glue on a maroon colored leaf and a yellow leaf. I just went ahead and threw every single color of leaf in there <laughs> because I like to overdo it most of the time. I added a couple of these pretty little orange flowers from the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure what they're called. And then I took a piece of that vine and I just used my finger to make the little tendrils for the pumpkin and I wrapped it around the stem. And then I took the color of Harvest Orange from Apple Barrel, and I've got one of those very small leaves, the little wooden leaves that I ordered off of Amazon, and I have those linked in my store below. And I just painted it orange, stuck it right in the center along with some little berries, and it turned out so cute, y'all. Look how sweet this is. Take a step into the river and get down on your knees. Come to the mountain, we'll take it in the view. You will find the life is greater than you knew. When you go through the storm, I will hold you, keep you warm. When you stay. DIY number three. This is my absolute favorite. We are going to make a farmer's market crepe. I took a piece of burlap from burlapfabric.com and I laid it down. And then I'm just going to take my little stencil, which came from plaid, and it says farmer's market country fresh vegetables, hand selected and hand picked. And I didn't want all of that on there. It wasn't going to fit anyway. So what I did was laid my stencil down. I took my black chalkboard paint that comes from the Dollar General, and I'm just going to stencil over farmer's market country vegetables. I just used my cheap little stencil brush that I got from the Dollar Tree, and it seemed to do a really good job. I normally use makeup sponges, but something told me just to try to use this brush, and so I did. And then I also had a Martha Stewart stencil that has a little chicken on a weather vane, and you know I love my chicken, so I was going to put this beside Farmer's Market. I took my burlap and put one little dab of glue on each of the four corners just so it would stay on this uh, backing of a picture frame. It's the cardboard part of the picture frame. 
Then I placed it inside the picture frame. I take four white tacks, and they're just regular white tacks from the Dollar Tree, and I put one in each corner of the picture, and then I take a very small ended paintbrush, and I'm going to paint those black. And I also go over anything that I think needs to be darkened up on the farmer's market sign. I didn't like the way the frame looked for the farmer's market sign, so what I did was took one of the canvases from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to strip the canvas off of it. I'm just going to use the frame, and all I'm going to do is take my antique Waverly Wax and just go over that real quick with a baby wipe. And wouldn't you know it, when I finished with this, I felt like the sign just fit like a glove, and I loved it, and I just glued it together. I then took that sign, and I'm going to glue it to the front of a crate that I got from Walmart. I had stained this crate, and then I filled it with some regular plywood in the bottom to fill it up and put some burlap around it. I took a bunch of leaves and pumpkins and corn from the Dollar Tree, and then those apples that I got off of Amazon, and I just filled it with anything that I could think of that would be considered at a farmer's market, or would be considered, you know, to be sold at a farmer's market. And I think this turned out beautiful. I absolutely love it. I even added a couple of little flowers. I think it was those mums that I had, that I dismissed from the uh, other DIY, the tobacco basket. I just filled it up with all the different pumpkins that I had, never mind that one that's kind of cracked and looks sick there on the top, that green one. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys, but I pretty much put in every pumpkin and every leaf that I had, and I think it looks gorgeous with this burlap inside of it, too. We're moving so fast, guys, and y'all don't know how much I missed y'all last week. I hate for this video to really come to an end, but we're moving right into DIY number four. And surprise, surprise, I'm going to do a reverse canvas. So I'm just going to cut the canvas portion off of this 10 by 10 sign. And I don't remember where I got this sign at. It's not from Dollar Tree. I want to say it was from like five below. So when I pulled the canvas off, I took some mineral chalk paint by Waverly, and I just gave it a good coat. It's not as important to have it around the edges because that part's going to be covered up, but I just made sure that I got the center very good there. I took my Waverly Antique Wax, and then I'm just going to put it on with a baby wipe all around my frame. I had to put a couple of staples in my frame around the corners just to reinforce it and make it pretty sturdy. I flipped the frame over and I just stapled the canvas to the frame. I cut off any excess that the canvas had hanging over the sides of the frame. Then I took this stencil that I purchased off of Amazon. I've got that in my Amazon store if you want to give it a try. It's pretty much the same thing as the Chalk Couture, but it was a lot cheaper. So I wanted to try it and see if it would work. It says, give thanks for a little and you will find a lot. And it really resonated with me. I also bought some of the paint off of the internet, but I didn't like it at all, by the way. And it was a peachy orange color. And I wanted to do kind of like an ombre effect on this. I wanted to have the orange at the bottom and then make it a little bit brighter as it goes up into white. And those are the two colors that I ordered. And like I said, I ordered those off of Amazon too, but I wouldn't recommend the paint. But I really like the silk screen itself. I thought that it worked well. I've tried the Chalk Couture, and I thought that this did just as good as that. So basically, you just use your paste, you put it on, and you peel it right back off. And it's perfect every time, it seems like. Now I'm going to make the bow. I have some beautiful ribbon that I purchased at Dollar Tree. It just says, like, give thanks, autumn, fall. It's got really pretty stuff on it, pumpkins, and it was the correct color. And I'm not sure what this type of bow is called, but it's where you just pretty much just make the circle the size that you want, and you squeeze it in the middle, and you do that two times, which makes like a top bow and a bottom bow. 
I hope that makes sense. It may be easier to watch what I'm doing than to listen to me. <laughs> but uh, you put the jute together and just tie it in the center. Then you just fluff it out. It's really easy and it makes a beautiful bow. I put it up in the corner, kind of catty cornered, along with one of those little wooden leaves. And then I also put a little tiny pine cone and some other little piece that came out of a packet of potpourri from the Dollar Tree. I then added just a little stem of leaves. And then I added a couple of the Sola wood flowers. I added one large one in the middle and then two smaller ones on the sides because it just felt like it needed something, and so I kept adding to it. <laughs> then I took that paste that I used to put the words on, and I put some of the orange color on the flowers, and I didn't like that color at all. It just wasn't orangey enough for me, so I took my Harvest Orange by Folk Art and mixed it up with a little bit of white until I got the orange color that I was craving, and I colored my solo wood flowers with that orange color. I then took some of that spray paint by Rust-Oleum two times, and it's called Rustic Orange, and I took a Dollar Tree candlestick and painted it, and then I have four of the tumbling tower blocks. I glued four of them together two times, and I'm just painting it with my antique wax and wiping it back off with a baby wipe. Then I glued one of those pieces of wood down to the candlestick. The other one is glued to the back of my sign, and then I'm going to glue those two together to make my sign so it will stand up and be very sturdy. Well, guys, it's that time. It's the end of the video, and I'm going to show you a few pics from our vacation, though. I can't leave those out. Jumping from cliffs so high, trusting our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. It's my favorite beach in Florida. The water is always beautiful, and there's not a lot of people here. Um, really, you know, people are afraid of Fred, and we're right on the beach, guys. Like, literally, look behind me. Here's our campground. Boom! We're right on the beach. <laughs> so I hope Fred don't come through, because there won't be no more crafty Kathy. I Love told you guys I was thinking about you. I missed y'all the whole time. I'm not kidding. Even if the sky is falling down. Even if the sky is falling Pretty mama. Hey, pretty mama. She comes out here every day and eats. Hey, pretty mama.
goes the turkey. She's just looking at me like, what do you need, hon? This is living in Tennessee, y'all. Oh, there's another deer. Oh, there goes the turkeys. They're in the yard. Just one, two, three, four, five. Before I go, guys, don't forget to connect with me on social media. I have an Instagram and we have a Facebook group for our channel. I will leave the, all those links in the description box below. Don't forget to check out that description box now. I love y'all so much and I will be seeing y'all soon. And I hope you like the little tidbits that I stick on there. This is just my everyday home life. But God bless me by putting me in Tennessee when I was born because there's no other place like this. I love you guys, and I sorely missed y'all. And I'll be seeing y'all soon, I promise. Bye.